I'll show how I removed this instrument cluster on a Chrysler Crossfire. This is similar to other Mercedes vehicles and in general can be applied to other car vehicles. You'll see a bunch of tips and tricks along the way in this detailed video. First, these are all the tools you're going to need. A plastic trim stick and a long flathead screwdriver, both to be used as levers. A long Phillips screwdriver and a stubby Phillips and a power tool doesn't hurt. You'll also need a 8mm socket with a ratchet. you also need a flashlight because it's dark under there. I'll put all these tools in the description below. If this video helps, please hit that like button and subscribe and later you can check out the other helpful videos on this channel. With that being said, let's get started. Open the driver's side door all the way and remove the fuse panel on the side. Use a short flathead screwdriver and then pry it off. Remove the screw with a Phillips. Now go underneath the lower instrument dash panel and remove all the screws. Let's start with the screw by the OBD reader. Now the ones towards the back you might not have to move but I'm going to do it anyway for a little bit more space. However it might not be necessary. Mention in the comments if you removed the screws towards the pedals or not. Don't forget to remove this screw. Moving back where your right knee would go, there's a hidden screw right in here that must be removed, the long Phillips screwdriver. Now remove the screw under the steering wheel. Now use a flat tip to gently pry off the trim piece. Now you'll see two more screws. Remove these with a stubby screwdriver. Now, looking underneath, you'll see two nuts. One right there, circle the hole, and the other one right there. Remove each one with an 8mm socket and a quarter inch ratchet wrench. Now pull out this air vent. You can push it from behind or even pry this out with your fingertips or a flathead screwdriver if you prefer. I have a separate video you can watch of me cleaning this air vent and its housing. I'll put that video in the description below. After removing the air vent, I'll pull it lightly. Let me double check first that I got all the screws removed. Okay, one last screw to remove. Don't forget any of them. Now let's drop this lower panel. Here's how it looks. Luckily, no wires or connectors have to be removed. So now I can actually remove the screws that hold down the instrument cluster. You'll see right where the air vent would have been, above there is a screw, so remove it. Now this has a little bit more flex to it, as you can see. Almost forgot, on the other side, near the key pop switch, Remove it as well. Now, while on this side, I'm going to remove the transponder ring by carefully twisting it counterclockwise. You don't have to do this. I'm just making sure it doesn't feel sticky behind this rubber ring. There we go. Okay, that just hang. Also, if you look underneath, you'll see the entire key assembly. I have a different video you can watch on removing the entire key assembly, which is done if you're having problems with your steering wheel or it's hard to turn. That will be in the description below as well. Anyway, let's finally remove the instrument cluster right now. You can either use a flat tip to pry around, or you can use a like a plastic wedge and do it that way instead. This would be preferred. That way you don't hurt the paint. I'm doing this with one hand. Let me grab two hands. Notice how I'm gently prying around with a trim stick and flathead screwdriver. This may look easy, but it's not. I'll go over the details shortly and remove it a second time so you can better understand how to best remove this. 
lots of tension here. Okay. Yeah. Now, for some detail when removing this. There is very little space after prying this. So what you'll want to do is snoop your fingertips on the bottom of the instrument cluster, and I am pulling it down and out slowly. The instrument cluster is now removed. You'll notice the clips all the way around. Reinstalling it is actually much harder in my opinion, but I'll give you some helpful tips along the way so you can get this in with minimal struggle. This is how the part looks. You can see the screw holes here and here, and there would be one here, that's three, and the fourth one is right there. This is how the back looks. And the part number is right there. I'll put this in the description. And you do not have to take out the steering wheel, as you can see, but you do need to make sure it's pulled towards you as much as possible. So going towards the seat. By the way, here's one last look at the speedometer area before I reinstall the instrument cluster. If this has helped so far, please tap the like button and subscribe for more detailed videos like this. Okay, now I'm gonna reinstall this instrument cluster cover. Of course, make sure that's clean. The steering column is clean before you put this on. Now I'm on the right side, pushing this down and in. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and take a look at the uh, grooves right here. There we go, put some light on. This groove goes right under there, okay? This groove does not go in here. It looks like it, but it doesn't. It just goes underneath here, okay? These two go under this big, let's see if I can show it to you, little groove right there. This groove goes right here, okay? And then this one goes right in there. And also, you'll notice, see this? This goes right there on the inside, and the same for that. Okay, see? This oval piece goes, lines up with this like moonlight shape, okay? You gotta really push down on this hard, bend it, and then get it underneath. Like that, okay? But you gotta do that starting from the corner, so. So you got to do that and then work all your way around. So again, when you're reinstalling this, you got to really push down, bend it, and push it forward into the back. And start from the right, go all the way to the left. Now that the instrument cover is on, I'll snap back on the transponder. Yep, just pop it in and twist. Beautiful. Now put the screws in. Next, put this screw in. Remember, the air vent goes underneath this. There we go. Before I move on, now would be a good time to clean the air vent. Just take a wipe and clean it good. Abracadabra. Look at that. Damn, that looks good. So next, you're going to kind of uh, maneuver this and lift this up into place. You can see the, some of the clips right here and this right here. It will snap into here and then this will snap into here. 
flip this into place. There's a groove right there, so that's perfect. And let's pop that in. Okay, get a screw. Let's just put one in for now. Here. Now tighten this with a short screwdriver. Let's do the other one, which you can see right here through the steering wheel. Put the screw in and tighten with the stubby. Have it tight. Okay, grab the under steering wheel cover plate and snap it in. While here, let's screw this in. Next is the air vent. Simply pop it in. Next, I'll go underneath the car and you will see this nice diagram of every Phillips screw or nut that needs to be tightened. There are two in the back, one by the OBD port, one in a concave leg space, one deep hole where your right knee goes, one screw under the steering wheel, and two nuts towards the center. So eight fasteners total. Once that's completed, you have one last screw to put on the side. This screw further holds in the entire lower trim. Finally, reinstall the fuse panel cover. Pretty straightforward, right? So. Mention in the comments if you found this to be easy, and please hit the like button and subscribe for more cool videos like this. As mentioned earlier, you can check out the other helpful videos on this channel, as well as all the supplies used. All that will be in the description below. Until next time, thanks for watching.